is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, December 18th, 2019, season 15, episode number 102. Welcome to another edition of The Break. We're live in the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. And uh, we've got a few things we're going to hit today. We're going to talk a little Pro Bowl. Cowboys get their uh, their guys in, a few of their guys in. Uh, we'll talk about some guys that maybe should have gotten in and uh, see how you guys feel about that. We'll also get into some storylines for the game. Nick has this weekly article where he tells us what uh, the prevailing storylines will be, Cowboys versus Eagles. And then Dave gives us his breakdown of the Eagles' offense. Uh, tomorrow we will do the defense. So let's start first with the Pro Bowl selections. Cowboys have four players named to the Pro Bowl. Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Zeke Elliott. Are there any guys that you think should have been on that list that were not? Nope. Well, nope. Should, should we nope. talk about the injuries first? I was going to say, this is a rare case where I think yeah. injury probably should lead the show. Sometimes really? I don't... You don't think it's notable well, that the name. quarterback yeah, hurt his he, shoulder? He played through it, right? He, you could argue he didn't look awesome for chunks okay. of that game. All right, and sure. Dax limited. He hurt his shoulder. Yeah. Clay Matthews landed on him on Sunday. He played through it. He's going to play Sunday. Right. But the injury. Cooper Rush is out there practicing. The injury is bad enough that he's not throwing in practice. Uh-huh. And Jason Garrett said it's hard for him to function. So, I, th- I mean, it's noteworthy. All he's right. going to play. but yeah, he's going to play. It's still noteworthy. I think that becomes a part of the analysis of the game when we start talking about this Eagles defense versus Dak on offense and how that plays out. Because he's playing. There's Absolutely. no doubt he's, he's definitely going to play. But if it hinders his effectiveness, I think that's noteworthy. Well, do you think it hindered his effectiveness last week? I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch from the play where he hurt his shoulder and really analyze it. I just know that he looked off on Sunday. Like he didn't look his most At accurate. At what point did he hurt it? Garrett said it was pretty early on in the game, right. first or second quarter. Uh, like I said, I mean, I this we've learned this 15 minutes ago, so I haven't had a chance. But yeah. I don't think he looked that great, and I'm sure that's part of it. I, he's also, you know, add that to the list with the finger and the wrist. And, yeah, I mean, it sounds like something that could hinder him pretty severely. Luckily, this is not a great Eagles secondary, but still. Yeah. Was there another injury? Uh, Tyron Smith also is not practicing. He's got a sty on his eye. That'll probably, you know, subside over the next yeah. few days, but he won't be practicing today. What's a pretty big sty? He said he can't open his eye, according Jeez. to Jason Garrett. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So just. He already has small eyes. Does he? I think so. <laughs> yeah. I never noticed that. I think so. So, uh, I mean. I never thought I have small be... eyes, so if I have one completely shut, that's a big problem because then I can <laughs> really barely see from the other one. He's such a big dude, you never think like small eyes, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to look at him next time. I think <laughs> they'll both be fine for Sunday, but it's, I don't know, if you want to call it troubling or at least noteworthy to start the week with. Yeah. That's where we're at. Something to keep an eye on, and we'll see how it goes, but I don't think, obviously, there, there's no, I shouldn't say no chance, but the likelihood that, that they don't play Sunday is relatively small. Yeah. All right, um, so let's talk about Pro Bowls. Uh, were there any guys that you thought should Nick? You already said no. Uh, there are any guys that are not on the list that should be on the list, in your opinion, that play for the Cowboys? Lyle Collins. I think Lyle Collins has been great this year, and I think, I mean, I get it. At some point, you got to draw the line. It's a, it's an All Star game, but I think it's silly. Three tackles get put on the team, and they're all left tackles. Meanwhile, guy, I mean, and it's not just Lyle Collins. Lyle's been great. Lane Johnson is one of the best right tackles in the league. Ryan Ramchick has been killing it in New Orleans. And they just don't get any recognition because they don't play the big visibility tackle spot. I think that's stupid. I think I would change it to be two left tackles and two right tackles. And I certainly think Lyle has a case to be, you know, I think he's he's one of the two or three best right tackles in the NFC at least. But based on how they do it where they only have three tackles, if he's going to make it, one of these guys, David Bakhtiari, Tyron Smith, or Taron Armstead, has to come off. Are you saying that he should be on over one of those three guys? No, that's my point. Is I think that's dumb. Like, 
it's like you got three spots for quarterback, but they're all starters, but you still get three. You know what I mean? So by that logic, there should be like five tackles, shouldn't there? You should have three times as many as players as you have starters is what you're saying exactly yeah. and so you should have six it, it, like in the in this instance like there's mm-hmm. three quarterbacks and they all play in the game so if there's enough tackles to cycle them in and out of the game you should have five or six and lyle collins should absolutely be one of those and right tackle should be represented on the roster yep. and it's not and it sucks and that's why you got snubbed um pound for pound and i think Tyron has had a good season. He's still a lot better than you want to get credit for. You're just spoiled by the expectations. But pound for pound, week for week, Lyle has been better than Tyron, I think, this season. Yep. And that's the tough part about offensive linemen, Nick. You were making the point. I'll let you make the point Mm. before we went on the air about offensive linemen and how tough it is for guys to get onto that Pro Bowl roster and how how much easier it is for a guy that's been on that Pro Bowl roster to stay on the Pro Bowl roster because offensive linemen. Well, I mean, we didn't. I mean, can you name another center in the league other than Kelsey? There's not a lot. I mean, Mac. Yeah, but I mean, to his yeah, point, with yeah, you, yeah. You just, yeah. And you like, and you could say, well, players know each other. Well, I mean, doesn't sound like the receivers know who the kicker is for the Cowboys. They don't know his name, so I don't know <laughs> if they know people's names. You know, so just so that you know, Nick's referring to a video that we put up where. Is that, oh, that, was side, our, that was our video? That was that was from Sounds of Sideline. <laughs> that was yes, our video. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. I was about to say it didn't. I'm, yeah, I'm they, 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 what's his name? Kay? Kai? I thought it was Kay. It was like, uh, Randall says, if he makes more kicks, I'm going to have to name my kid Kai. And <laughs> Mari was it like, works. what the hell is that? <laughs> I, that was fantastic. <laughs> so, I, I mean, and I, get, and I get it. He just got here. But that doesn't mean that you know the center on the other team yeah. and all that. And you just look at him like, Frederick, yep, Martin, yep. So, all that being said, I'm sure it happens on the on the other side too, and I just I just don't believe that Dak Prescott. This isn't the year that you're going to take away the the Hall of Fame quarterbacks that are having great seasons. I mean, their their team is is really good. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, and Russell Wilson. Who does Dak in a seven seven record replace? If you want to say Drew Brees, he's got six wins. In, in nine games, he's got six wins. So, I mean, Dak got seven and 14. You know, and their intercept, their touchdowns are pretty close, too. So, I just, I think Drew Bree, I think, I don't think quarterback was a snub there at all. I really don't. I completely agree. On, I mean, if Dak was on there, I wouldn't be mad about it. No, but he, I'm, it's I'm, deserved, but it's just in this year, there's just too many. If you're working yourself into a frenzy that Dak should be on there, I just, I don't see it. Um, they're yeah. set, they're seven and seven, and it's obviously way. I mean, there's more to it. Quarterback wins are not just a quarterback stat, but if you're so good that you should, you know, like, like you got snubbed for the Pro Bowl, then you, you mean you should be able to lift your team to a little bit better performance than that. Right. Yeah, and if you're going to make the argument just based upon the stats that he belongs there, then you got to also throw in Jameis Winston because Jameis Winston's right up there, maybe ahead of him in yards. Yeah. I don't know about touchdowns. I'm not certain. I know he has a ton more interceptions. Yeah. But the point is, if you're just going by stats, there are still other guys that get into the picture. And I don't think that if you just look at stats, that's necessarily a good indication for the quarterback position right. uh, because there are other things that are factored in for quarterbacks. And what's, and what's Aaron Rodgers' stats? Because I, I saw 21 touchdowns and two interceptions. Mm-hmm. That, that seems pretty good to pretty me. Good, yeah. yeah. So, but they haven't been throwing as much as they they have in in previous years, and and by the way, they're winning. That they're winning, <laughs> so that means that they're, whatever their formula is, yeah. he's doing what it takes from the quarterback position to run that kind of scheme and yeah. to be able to and, to move the ball and be effective. You know, and and I think the heart of the voting took place in the last three weeks, or you know, the last month or so. Yeah. You know, don't don't lose three in a row on national TV because I guarantee you, you're like, all right, let's look at this Cowboy team. They're playing the Patriots today. Well, they didn't score a touchdown. Okay, well, on Thanksgiving Day, they play the, the Bills. Well, they threw one touchdown, and he threw another one late in the game when it was probably turned off. And then against the Bears, his touchdown pass was probably not even seen by most people because it was way late in the game, too. And that, that was one where a lot of stats seemed kind of hollow in that game. So That's absolute, and, and you can make the same argument for Amari Cooper. Cooper. I, I think Cooper, Cooper's got a good case to be there, but none of the, I'm not— yeah, you, you know, can't get mad at those. All players. the guys that made it over him have good cases too. They got and better numbers than he does. I, people, people have kind of. There's been some backlash. Like you go back to like Detroit and the Giants game, at the start of November. You're like, Dak's got a case to build his mm-hmm. resume. You know, he's going to be on national TV four times. He's going to play on Thanksgiving. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And it didn't happen. And people kind of came back like, "Wow, you feel stupid, don't you?" And I was like, "No." 
All I said was he would have the opportunity to build that case, and he mm-hmm. didn't do it. And that's probably why he's not in the Pro Bowl either. If they had played better mm-hmm. in that stretch, he'd have everything he could possibly want. Yeah, speaking about Amari Cooper, all four of the guys that made it had more yards than him. All but one had more touchdowns. That was Julio. Julio only, only has six, where Amari has eight. Uh, but you got Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. All have had really, really great years and statistically better than Amari Cooper. So it's hard to to, to make the argument that he st- that he should have been in over any of those guys. Were you guys at all shocked that only four guys got in though? No. I know we went through this the other day. I think we had way more than that that yeah. we thought could get in. I was pretty um, pleased with the list, yeah. you know, and I still think that uh, there could always be the possibility that some of these guys make it into True. as we go on. But the one that definitely shocked me, and I don't know why, well, I do know why, Travis Frederick. It's it's amazing to see that he made it into the Pro Bowl. I remember earlier in the season, Nick was even talking about, oh, well, is Joe Looney maybe better? <laughs> Could we plug Joe Looney yeah. in there right. <laughs> with some of the issues Thanks. that they were having <laughs> earlier on? No, but it, it's, I mean, it's really great to see where he was at last year and him barely even able to walk, losing so much weight, so much muscle weight, and him making the Pro Bowl this year. That was impressive. True. When you think about, you know, you've been in the locker room last late last year and him kind of walking the way he was, he was walking it, and you're like, He's not. He's not going to play next year. He's not going to play anymore. I mean, I don't know if you ever thought that. Absolutely, way. Yeah. It was just yeah. like, watching him limp around. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, he he looked, and I don't I don't mind saying this. I mean, he looked like a 75 year old man walking down. Mm-hmm. He really did, and and to be able to come back and play is remarkable. And then to to be at a at a Pro Bowl level, that's that's just. I mean. Can he, can he get Ed Block Courage Award? Is, he, is, Absolutely. is that going to happen? I would, think, so. I would think that's. Definitely. Actually, he probably already won that. This no, last I, year. they all they announced those for yeah. the year. He's past, got that. So, but but you know, it, it was it it was amazing. I don't think he's played as great as we've seen in, you know in other years. But I can say the same about Zach and, and Tyron. And I yeah. just I I think reputation you know for them. Which it's funny. I mean, yeah, we said you know Dak and Amari had cases. And and we said six or seven guys might make it. Like the Cowboys, still they're like third in the NFC in terms of selections. Like they've got yeah. they've got more than the Packers. They got more than the Vikings. They have as many as the 49ers, yeah. who are having a great year. Yeah. The Seahawks and the Packers only got two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really? Yeah, each. Rogers and Bakhtari and uh, Wilson and Wagner. So the Cowboys wow. doubled up. Two of the best teams in the so no they're fine they're absolutely fine. That's yeah. what's crazy though. They it's probably like, got more than they deserve to have off the strength of this season. Yeah, we we talk about them not being as good this year, but then when you l- compare them to the rest of the league, it's like they're still pretty damn good. Right. So yeah. it, it's, it's almost just, they're, they're the a fact that they're not even meeting our expectations. Performing right. team, and That's that does what speak I, I mean. to the the talent level. And we've had this debate back and forth: Are they really as talented as we think? I think it does speak to the fact that when you've got three guys on offensive line that are even in that conversation, that matters, right? How many teams around the league have three offensive linemen? Whether you believe that Travis had his best year, or any of them have, or whether they deserve this to have three guys that are even in the conversation on one offensive line. And by the way, make the argument that the best of them didn't get placed on that list right. in Lyle Collins. Who has that, right? right. And, and that says they got talent. They just haven't been able to well, put it all together. Well, I mean, down. you can also say, too, I mean, four Pro Bowlers, that, that's great. But when it's you know when it's third and six and you're, and you're right. on defense, you're, none of those Pro Bowlers are helping you. So, mm-hmm. yes, you do have talent. But my, my point all along is, is it spread around equally – and to the point where you know you could still lose games because yeah. of your defense and your offensive line at, at times this year didn't you know as dominating as they can be they didn't go dominate a lot of games that's why I'm surprised that three guys made the Pro Bowl yeah, honestly me too all right let's take our first break when we come back we're going to get into some storylines Nick's going to tell us a little bit about what to expect this week as far as stories around Cowboys versus Eagles for the division title at least for the Cowboys uh, we'll do that when we come right back this is DallasCowboys.com radio. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. 
Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an ice. Cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Back to the break. Welcome All back. Right. Second segment of the show live from SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're talking Cowboys versus Eagles. Nick's going to tell us the storylines of the week. What are the things that... Fans will be tracking this week heading into this Cowboys versus Eagles and matchup. D- Dave can help me with it, too, because Dave helped me. He did. Oh, Dude, that's right. You wrote the story? I some helped write the story. Oh, um, that's what happens when the boss decides that, right? He just like, hey, Dave, why don't you write this story? No, it really happens when people put like four meetings in one day. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream Who work, Who does Derek? that? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> all right. For the Eagles, I mean, it's it's similar to the Cowboys. Of yeah. this is do or die for them. I mean, they if they don't win this game, they're out of the playoffs. It's not exactly the same for the Cowboys, but you know they have to win this game. Uh, and if they don't, then the Cowboys win the NFC East. If if they win, they have to beat the Giants. Um, or, and the Cowboys have to win, or the Cowboys ha- can lose. If they beat the if they beat the Cowboys, and then they both lose, the Eagles will win saying, yeah. the division. So. Um, obviously, they, they got to win this game because they can't count on the Redskins beating anyone, or you know, can't count on anything with the Giants. Is one of the things that Dave mentioned, and he'll talk more about is their receivers are just so banged up. I mean, like, I guess the three guys they've got now are going to be Whiteside, Davis, and Ward. I mean, uh, those are the three. Aguilar could be back for this game. Okay, that's something to watch, but. I mean, that's he doesn't scare you. It, you know, the, you if anything, ask. you're kind of like, sure, play I mean, Nelson Ward, Aguilar. That yeah. sounds great. He, he, Ward is he, a former quarterback, yeah. college quarterback. For those of you who follow U of H football, I didn't even realize that's that was Houston. the same guy. Yeah, Houston. I didn't. Even, <laughs> I didn't even realize that was the same guy until Clarence mentioned it while we were watching the game yeah. on Sunday, and I was like, oh, that is that guy. And he's he's a really small guy, it seems mm-hmm. like. But but yeah, it's a guy that's been been changed over from quarterback to receiver. So you would think he's probably not a polished receiver it's at this point. A, it's a really cool story. Like yeah. he's, I mean, he's yo-yoed on and off the roster like 16 times, and he caught the game winner against yeah. Washington. Like broke down in the end zone, mm-hmm. which I totally get it. But yeah. he, I mean, he shouldn't scare you in terms of just beating up on the Dallas secondary, right? No. And then uh, one guy that is starting to kind of provide a spark for them is Miles Sanders. He he has a thousand yards in both. Uh, rushing, uh, I mean, a thousand yards total from scrimmage, rushing, receiving, and a really nice touchdown catch in the back of the end zone. I don't know if you saw that play. I mean, it was a yeah. great throw by Wentz. That's Wind. Dave's guy. The, You've been talking about him since draft, right? I really love Miles Sanders, but that was, that was one of the best throws I've seen all year yeah. by Carson Wentz. That was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, their secondary has been pretty bad. <laughs> uh, Dwayne Haskins got them pretty good uh, last week. Not enough to win, but they've been banged up as well. They, they got all kinds of problems there in the secondary. And then one thing I, I, I did see that on third down, they are the second best team in the league on third down. So they're they're tough to get off the field. On offense or defense? Offense, forty seven percent. They're converting. The only team better than that is the Dallas Cowboys at forty eight point seven. Huh. So may be Beat a lot again. of third down conversions. And then of course the Cowboys. We know we know the the Cowboys storylines, right? I mean Malcolm Smith, MVP, yeah, signed. Hmm. Where's number forty three? 
one of the few numbers in in NFL history. I mean, in the Cowboys, that is uh, two Ring of Honor players were, have won forty three. You want to name them? You I'm name sure them. you know. I don't know. That's why I, I said the two forty threes. Cliff Harris. Amber. Seriously. No. Who's the other one? Seriously. No idea. Don Perkins. Don oh, Perkins. oh damn! Hey. I feel dumb now. Why he played nineteen sixty two to yeah, sixty eight? You weren't even like a thought, like even. I mean, that yeah. was. You'd be I even shocked. Have that name close to a forty three. That doesn't even look right or in my head. Yeah, I don't Perkins. see it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was one of the guys upstairs was like, ah, was "Trash number forty three. He's like, "Well, there's a couple of Ring of Honors so <laughs> know, before right? we before we just you know before we just throw it away." Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's one of those numbers that like means something. Like can't just give it forty three to anyone. Maybe they gave it to Sensible. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I just wanted to get his name in there, drilled right. sense of ball. Okay, good. All right, Dave, tell me about this Philadelphia offense. Um, they're super duper banged up. That's okay. I mean that I mean Nick the the main thing is the receivers. Okay. Um they don't have any left. Nelson Aguilar might be back. Good for him. He he won, he won a game for the Falcons this year. Yeah, he did. I um, mean, and <laughs> wasn't he the one that the that the fire fi- not the yeah. firefighter? Yeah, the, the the guy from the the viral video from the fire in Philly. Like you know, I was just catching him, unlike Aguilar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I that's, forgot that's, about that. Yeah. that so I mean, funny. so it's it's Nelson Aguilar, J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, Greg Ward Jr. Uh, that's their receiver. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. My my first note is that Ertz is definitely going to play receiver a bunch. They do. I mean, they have two good tight ends. They still put their tight ends on the line. But like watching the Redskins game, I I was shocked at how often it's like because you never see it, and when you do see it, you notice it. How often the Eagles just had five men on the line of scrimmage, like five, you know, mm-hmm. two tackles, two guards in the center, and nobody else because Ertz and Goddard lined up out wide so much. It's like it's striking when you see that because that's not NFL football. Uh, they do it a lot out of necessity. Ertz and Goddard can both line up out wide. They are the number one and number two receivers on this team by a hysterical margin. Um, Ertz, Ertz is it's it's comical. I say hysterical for a reason. Where where are my stats? Uh, Ertz has 84 catches. The number two receiver on this team is Goddard with 45. Oh, so the, it's both of their tight ends. They're just running away with it. Um, so. I don't understand why teams haven't, to this point, gone into games, particularly last week, and I would think this week as well, saying, okay, take Ertz away. Yeah. Force them to – you can double him mm-hmm. or you put a cornerback on him. And if you put a cornerback on him, let, let's say you decide that you're just going to run with with uh, with um, Byron, Byron Jones. just yeah. on him the whole game. I, he's going to still catch some passes because he's really good. But you could limit him, I think. And, and if you take him away or you at least limit him – what else do they have to well, really be able to hurt you? Uh, I, you know what? I was thinking that too. But but okay. Even though we don't know those receivers very well, there's still wide receivers in the NFL. Got it. So the point is, is that if you're going to put Byron Jones on Ertz and Cheeto on Goddard, you can't just put Jalen Smith on Greg Ward and say that that that's going to work. I mean, yeah. like you can't. You have five corners for everyone because he's just saying they're spreading everybody out. So they are. I still think there's some mismatches there that the Eagles are. I, I feel have. better about Greg, Greg Ward going up against whoever you want to throw out at cornerback. That would be your fourth cornerback. I still feel better about that than I do letting Ertz match up with Jalen Smith. Yeah, like that to me would be a problem for the well, Cowboys. That's what's what two tight ends are supposed to do. They're supposed to be on the line of scrimmage at the sna- almost at the snap of the ball. They could run the ball, so you have to kind of honor that because they can block and get in the way. And the next thing you know, they spread out, and now how do you handle that? That's what a really good two tight end set is supposed to do, and I'm sure that that's what they do. If Ertz is off the line, I would put a corner on him. I agree. I would, and if he's on the line, I would double him with the linebacker and Jeff Heath. That's yep. what I would. That's do. That's exactly right. Uh, and he, I mean, and when I say like he's not flexed out like you know in the slot, like he goes everywhere. He'll yep. he lines up outside too. He can do all that. And I think the Cowboys probably will. Use cornerbacks to cover him when the when the need arises. It just depends on where he lines up. I would literally go into the game defensively and say every play I'm identifying where he is and based on where he is and what I think that that what my study tells me of how they're going to use him. I'm going to have either a double, either double, or I'm going to have one of my better corners on him, and I'm going to try to limit him and force the quarterback to go somewhere else. Because here's the deal: if Greg Ward's beat, if Greg Ward beats you or whoever else Whiteside beats you. 
then okay, they beat us. They were good that day, right? But I'd rather take away the guy that I know can beat me and make somebody else do it than then go with something that's a little Which, more spread that, out. That's the point, though. I mean, you don't have that many players, so that so that's why they're going to go. That's why the the mismatch is there. If you want to take away their tight end with your corner, then one of your safeties has to cover one of their receivers, right? You know what? Okay. And again, and you're good with that. If you're talking about one of their their second or third receiver on that list. I'm good with that. I'll take that chance. I completely, I completely, and 100 percent agree with Derek. These rece- I mean, if JJ Arcega Whiteside uh, takes over this game and beats you, he just, he just won't. I just, I don't really believe that. He's got t- eight catches on the year. Uh, they went into that. They purposely played with three receivers in the in the Redskins game. He was targeted twice and finished with no catches. I think he could be a good player. He's a third round pick, but I don't think he's there right now. Nelson Aguilar has a long history of not being that good. He's but if Jalen Smith has to cover any of those guys, it yeah, could be I'm a not problem. saying I want to put him out there. I'd I rather put. I take. I take my safety. I take. Uh, I take one of my safeties and slide them down to cover a guy in the slot or cover a guy outside before I would send Jalen out on him. But I, okay, I just think it's just a little bit harder than just saying just put two corners on those guys because I I think they can come back in, in this set. scenario. And to be clear, I'm not saying Goddard necessarily. Okay. I, and Goddard might be the guy that actually ends up really hurting you this yeah. week if you really pay a lot of attention to Ertz. But I would take away their top threat, and it's clear as by that number. He's doubling the next closest receiver as far as just productivity. Yep. To me, you take him away and you force the quarterback to identify other guys that are open and you force those other guys to beat you. I, agree. I think that's a strategy worth taking. Yeah, In these I'm hypothetical scenarios, like if the Eagles came out there with 12 personnel, two tight ends, two receivers, I would put a cornerback on Ertz if he's, you know, if he's out there and double Goddard. And just one up the rest of them, yep. and that includes and make them just beat me one up. That yeah. includes the running back, which that's scary because that's the next part. Is after the tight ends, it's the running backs. I mean, that's what Wentz has right now, and that's almost exclusively what they use. Miles Sanders has 42 catches on the year. He's he's dynamic in both aspects. He's he's a good runner too. He makes great cuts. He seems like he's got really good vision. And also, the Eagles have a talented offensive line. Lane Johnson hasn't been playing, but he might be back. Something to watch this week. Don't make me say the name of the guy that's playing for him. It's, oh, yeah. it's Big V. You know, Big V. Yeah, you remember him. Yeah. Um, How's Peters as far as his health? Because it seems like he's always kind of in and out. He yeah. is. Where been, is he right now? He's been playing. Well, okay. I mean, yeah, that's fair. But yeah. he's been playing. Okay. And so it's. I mean, by that standard, it's better than it has been. Right. In recent matchups, um, they they scheme a lot of. Just short throws for Wentz. Even you know, like Ward caught a lot of passes like in motion where he motions into the flat. And I I'm rewinding the tape. Like was that a running back that caught that or a receiver? Because I I don't think these guys can run routes. Having Aguilar might help them just from the sense that he probably knows the whole route tree. I'm not convinced that Ward and Whiteside do because mm-hmm. they're scheming up really basic stuff for them to run. Like not because Wentz can't do it, but I don't know if they can. So. Yeah. Aguilar might help just in the sense that he can tr- play traditional wide receiver a little bit more three dimensionally. Um, Wentz, Wentz is very athletic, and a lot of this stuff comes from his ability to extend plays. If you get a shot at him, you got to get him on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he made a lot of plays in this game just by extending them. The throw to Miles Sanders being one of them. I mean, mm-hmm. he drew that thing out for eight or nine seconds before he finally threw the ball. Um, Boston Scott. Mm-hmm. Know that name. I think he's not as under the radar as he would have been because everybody watched that Monday night game where he played great. But uh, he's been targeted 40 uh, – no, I'm sorry. Where are we at? He's he's had 13 receptions in the last two weeks, and he's got 14 on the year. So it's very – I mean, it's out of necessity, but they are finding him and making him part of the offense. He's also carried the ball 16 times for 85 yards uh, in the last two games. So, like, he has developed into a pretty reliable part of their offense because they don't have any receivers. Him and Sanders can both run. They can both catch. Boston Scott, Miles Sanders, Dallas Goddard, and Zach Ertz. Like, that's how this offense is going to move. Right. And they've shown that it can. They sco- and They scored 30 points against Washington doing this. And, like, Wentz is a good enough quarterback to pick this skill player group up, I think. I mean, as we know, we just saw a game last week with the Cowboys where the tight ends and the running backs, I mean, that was the offense, and the receivers weren't as involved. So we know you can win like that, and they they probably have 
better. T- well, not probably. They've got better tight ends. Um, so I, I'm not saying they can't win. My yeah. thought is just you gotta you gotta force them to do it with other people rather than let the guy you know can beat you beat you. I don't even want to say this because it always starts a firestorm. Like the Dak wins debate just gets people going, like Eli Romo used to. Yeah, and. <laughs> I know, like Dak leads. Dak leads the league in in drops, and and it hasn't been perfect for him. I think the world of Dak, Carson Wentz doesn't have a lot to work with right now, and he's still playing pretty well. Like I'm sure but earlier in the year, he he had some, he had most of his guys, and it it mm. it was it, there was a while there where Ertz really wasn't really going the way you would expect Ertz to be going. There he had some struggles early in the season. This offense has gotten like maybe two games out of their preferred. Skill package, yeah. you know what I mean? Like Jordan, well, Deshaun Jackson, that was a huge. They loss got for them one early. game out of Deshaun yeah. Jackson. And he had a great one. If you if you watch yeah. that game, it's obvious what they wanted him to right. be for this offense, and they haven't had it, and they've had to readjust. Because I mean, Alshon Jeffrey's a hell of a receiver, but he's not that burner dude that scares the hell out of you. Mm-hmm. But uh, they had to know that going in. You go and sign Deshaun Jackson at this point in his career. He's already a guy that's been injured a lot throughout his career. Yeah. That's just what you're going to. How get. that may be the case, but. They have not had their preferred guys, and I like I can hear the angry people right now. I know, I get it. You gotta. Yeah. It, that's part of football, but I'm sure Wentz would love to have the skill <laughs> players. That Cobb, da- I mean, Gallup, Dak hasn't yeah. had to deal with that at all this year, yeah. and it just is what it is. They're both good players, yeah. but Wentz is making it work as best he can with a not ideal situation. All right, we're gonna take our final break. We'll come back. We'll get some questions. You guys call us eight 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 five five two two nine seven again eight 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 five five Two two nine seven. We'll be back. This is the break. Ready? Okay. Give, give me, me an S. S. Give me an O. O. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. It's What's that spell? So so. Are we gonna win? Not if we play like we cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT and T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS One Score September 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the Otterbox Boys. Otterbox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases, the one and only. But cases are just the start. Otterbox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their elevation tumblers? And Otterbox elevation tumblers come in three sizes: a 10 ouncer, a 20 ouncer, and even a 64 ounce. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation tumblers at OtterBox.com. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this... the Seat Geek app and let's go. Seat Geek. Hey Cowboys Nation, this season when the Cowboys win, you get to experience the sweet taste of victory because if the Cowboys win, the next day Duncan is offering a free medium hot or iced coffee. So don't just celebrate the Cowboys success from the sidelines, head to Duncan and treat yourself to real victory because this season Cowboys fans aren't only winning on game day, they're winning the next day too with a free medium coffee. Cowboys Nation runs on Duncan. Excludes cold brew. Limit one per guest. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Back to the break. Final segment of the break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We want to take some questions from you guys. Call us 888-855-2297. We'll take your calls that way. Uh, I also have a question right now for you guys from Joshua Hernandez. He sent this via Twitter. He said, do you see the Cowboys blitzing more because of the Eagles not having any serious threats at the wide receiver position? Yeah, I mean, especially when you're talking about guys that don't have a lot of great speed and they're not big guys that can go you know, up down the field and, and out jump you. Uh, yeah, I, I like the matchup there. And, and that's one thing about tight ends. As good as they are, they, they put their body on you and stuff, but they're not that quick where they're going to just, you know, right off the bat get open. So I could see I could see where you get some blitzes early, you know, not early in the game, but, I mean, a blitzes that will, you know, get him get the ball out of his hands. I, I would be in favor of it. I, just, I mean, they're 27th in the league in blitz rate, I think. Who? Oh. The Cowboys. Like I mean, they just there. they just don't they just don't do it. They they never really have. Um, 
I hope so. Though. I mean, we. I mean, they Blitzers got both of their sacks in the last game, so yeah, maybe they build that in. Well, I, I would be in favor of it. Miles Sanders. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that'll hurt you if you keep blitzing mm, a lot. Right of you I want to know what kind of Cowboys defense we're gonna get this weekend because it can go both ways. Obviously, we've seen them having great games like the last one, but then at the same time, we've seen them when they get really hurt by the running back and even tight ends and those little short plays that they just sometimes are unable to cover at all. So it'll be interesting it's, to see. It's a, I mean, it's a good thing when the other team doesn't have any wide receivers, but the players they do have are what you need good linebackers for, and that's what the Cowboys don't really have right now. Right. They're going to put a lot of stress on the linebacker core. Lee's hobbled. Joe Thomas is hobbled. Malcolm Smith just got here. So, I mean, that's going to be tight ends and running backs. Like, yeah. that's kind of – that's your area of expertise. So – it's going to be big for them. All right. Let's get a phone call from Steve in New Jersey. Steve, what up? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Pleasure you? to call you. I really love the show. I listen to it every day. Um, 40-plus year Cowboy fan here. Right. Um, hey, I'm right and stuck in – I'm, like, right at the shore in Jersey here, if you know what I mean. So uh, I'm right and stuck up between Giant and uh, Eagle territory. So Eagles are much more rougher, <laughs> believe me. I wouldn't even dare go to the link. It's right. crazy. Um I got to admit, guys, you know what? It seems like whenever our defense has played well, it seems like we get good penetration from our tackles. I mean, you know, they don't, Malik Collins, and he, he's been a little bit inconsistent. I remember you guys seeing the beginning of the year, you guys thought he was going to be, you know, one of the guys coming out that Brian and you guys all thought he was going to be, you know, better than he was the last couple of years. He's been inconsistent. If, if, if they can get a push up the middle on Wentz, that that can solve the whole Ertz problem right there, I think, personally. And it seems like when their defense plays well, their tackles, you know, get good penetration. And it seems like when they don't, that's when they struggle because they just double D Ware and uh, you know, Quinn. Well, that was D Law. But um you wish D Ware was there. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, nice. you're talking about the the Eagles uh interior line, I believe two of them are in the Pro Bowl, right? You say it's not a great Kelsey. matchup. Uh, Jason Kelsey and Brandon Brooks. I mean, Brooks has been a, a find for them. He, mm-hmm. he just signed a big money deal. He's been really good. So that, that's not going to be. Well, I mean, at least Antoine Woods is back. Woods and is back. <laughs> hey, he, he showed played to like be gangbusters a the other maker. day. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I agree in theory. And that's. I don't think Malik Collins has been bad. Inconsistent is probably a good word. I mean, that describes a lot of people on this team. But if you had a. And they they haven't they great I think he's at four four and a half sacks or something like yeah. that Malik but I mean if they had an you know a nine or ten sack three technique which they haven't had since Jason Hatcher yeah, yeah. it could make all the difference maybe we need to kind of think about that m- more next year you know one year of training camp we were like oh we're not we're gonna look at the kickers this year you know because we got burned two years ago. Maybe we need to look at that too with the offensive line and be like, all right, or the the line play and say, okay, Malik Collins looks like he's doing well, but is he really? Because you know they're not just like blocking to the ground and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, he he was doing a nice job in those one on one drills and all that, but some sometimes that's hard to translate into actually playing when you get four on four out there, so or four on five. Whatever. All I know is, and, and I get it. I mean, we're not we're not infallible. We make mistakes all the time, and we can only go off what we see. And we were wrong. I mean, Xavier Woods and Cheeto jump out to my mind in terms of guys that mm-hmm. looked a lot better at training camp. But like, it's not like all of this is just our uninformed opinion. Like, we talk to people. Like the, the coaches right. were blown away by Malik Collins in training yes. camp. Like, right, but talked about him constantly, constantly hearing, not like, to us, tape sessions well. at night, yeah. like, circling him and yeah. look at this badass. Look at the camp he's having. Right, yeah. but the, and my, my point is is that, and they also are seeing him play against that, well, air. Yeah, and, that's and, true. Yeah, but a lot of that, a lot of the plays that, that he that he turned heads on were not necessarily yeah. just in the one-on-ones. It was in the team as well. You're right, though. When you're not playing live football, just, yeah. then it is a little different. It but, definitely is. But we say that every year, and you get to training camp. The reason why you go to training camp, everyone's excited. Like, yeah. who's looking good? And, yeah. and all you can talk about is what's what in the see. moment. That, and that's all you can talk about. We, you know, I've gotten dragged on a few occasions about things I said during training camp. I'm like, cool, next summer I'll just go out there and not share anything with y'all, and we'll see how that plays. Like, you know, I'm sure you would hate it even more. 
Right. Just and you just talk about what you see, and that doesn't mean it always translates into the season. We've seen that many times before. Guys can have great camps, not necessarily have but great seasons. Without a doubt, though, if the defensive tackles can provide a push, because you know that Quinn and Lawrence and Bennett and Bennett might be one of those guys, you know, providing the push, but. Those guys are going to get some outside rush, and that's, they're going to force the quarterback to step up. How, how much room does he have to step up is the big question. If he's got no room, then that's a sack, and that's a turnover, and that's a big play. That's the key. So the caller, I think, is right. Defensive tackles need to provide that push, and it's been inconsistent. It's a massive bummer that safety and D tackle were their two biggest needs, and neither one of them feels addressed right now. Yeah. Like, Not for lack of trying, but just uh, doesn't. I mean, for defensive them. tackle, they tried they with, didn't with try. the pick that they had. Uh, I understand. I'm saying at defensive tackle, you can't address both of them with second round pick. Like that's right. the highest pick you had. Right. You address one of them, and it doesn't. Like Dave said, it doesn't feel like it was addressed and because even, you're not seeing anything. It was from addressed him. in trade. They had to go get Michael Bennett. True. Yeah. Honestly, even if even if Tristan Hill develops into a good player, like Malik is a free agent, Jeff Heath is a free agent, Xavier Woods is not, but he's closer to the end of his contract in the beginning. And he, Xavier, no, he, he no, was a draft said, pick. I, I was thinking Antoine Woods. Antoine Woods is a restricted free agent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and throw tight end in there, too. Uh, they Those three bugaboo spots. And, I mean, Jarwin looks promising, but yeah. you still well, you're feel kind of thin there. I mean, also, you're losing Michael Bennett. He's a free agent. He's gone. Quinn? Not, is right, Quinn up? Gone. Yeah. Not coming back. You don't think you so? Don't think? No. I think they might be willing to pay him good money. Not great money. They're not going to pay him tank money, but... He's one of those. It's hard somebody, to gauge. Somebody might pay him pretty good money. But at his age, you would think it's a shorter term deal. So they may be willing to pay him a significant amount on a short term, two year deal, one Maybe. year deal, whatever it is. Right? Those guys know. are hard to gauge because, like, he's gotten his he's gotten a contract extension. Like, he's made big money, and so now, like, length of the deal, yeah. money, how much he likes the area, how much he likes the area, how much he likes the scheme, and that'll depend on coaching. And yeah, all of a sudden, true. we're way in the weeds. God, we have <laughs> so much change ha- coming yeah. soon. Oh you my didn't, God. I didn't think so coming into this year. I thought that so much was locked up, but it, it really is uh-huh. a lot. They got a lot that they'll have a lot of decisions to make, a lot of contracts to be made, a lot of guys that they maybe want to keep that they won't be able to keep. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be a very very interesting off season once you get there, and and not to mention. The whole cloud that's hanging over this coaching staff. Yeah. Like, there's a lot that's going to be happening in this off season. Yep. All right, we're gonna. Uh, that's that's it for us. Actually, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be back. We're actually on, done. We'll be back on with you guys tomorrow. We'll get into this Philadelphia defense. See if that sounds any better or uh, presents any interesting problems for the Cowboys. Till then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia, I am Derek Eagles, and this has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?